Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's Too Fast Too Movie. I'm your host, Abraham, and with me is my co-host, Ben, here to talk about Season 4, Episode 13 of Attack on Titan, Children of the Forest. And before we begin, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications because we post videos all the time on this channel, so you'll always have a reason to come on back. And spoilers ahead for this episode of Attack on Titan, you have been warned. My God. Yeah. Uh, we... I I don't I don't know where to begin. Where do we start with this, ep- uh, I, with this episode? The, a lot happened here. Honestly, I feel like it's gonna. Okay, clear. We, we got we got poisoned wine with yep. spinal fluid. We've been lied to. People are smacking people with bottles over the tops of their heads and punching children and putting yeah, knives to their uh, throats. This would uh, honestly, it's if this were live action, I don't know if this would float at all like if we yeah. were if this was like an american <laughs> television show it would be ca- done canceled yeah absolutely i i <laughs> they uh yeah they're they're really reveling in the the dark the the horrific just scenes imagery topics and themes i i love it because i mean obviously with animation you know you can explore these more grotesque things more comfortably than i think live action i think yeah you, there's a there's they feel less you there's a slight disconnect but they're still you know it, it allows us to touch up on some things and instead of being like oh my god i'm watching a children be getting beat to death it's like huh gabby's getting punched in the face which yeah. i do not condone i'm still uh, i still don't think gabby did anything wrong just uh, to uh maybe not that far i think gabby did do, <laughs> gabby did do wrong things but she is first and foremost a child which is something that is finally expressed in this episode by another character um and i'm glad that that was done because i'm tired i'm i'm honestly sick of all of the gabby slander yeah, like I, I don't, I don't understand how people can get so mad about a child soldier. Obviously, I get killing your favorite character and killing someone that is pure, but I think it speaks volumes to the atrocities of war that a pure soldier, Sasha, was killed by an impure child, Gabby. Yeah, like I, I, it, I well, we're gonna talk about that today because we again we have a lot to go in. So yes, uh, we do. So let's go ahead and start off with just talking about the wine, because that's the, the first crazy thing that happened. So we open the episode, obviously, with the events that happened in season two. During Zeke's appearance on Paradise, he and other Marleyan soldiers gassed the citizens of Rogako with his spinal fluid. And this is the means by which he can turn people into titans. At the restaurant... Gabby and Falco are having a meal with the Browse family, and in the middle of the lunch, the scouts arrive and ask to speak with Niccolo about the volunteers and to get more information on Yelena. John, seeing a bottle of wine, picks it up and notes that it's only for the MPs. Niccolo quickly snatches it out of his hands and remarks that it's not meant for Eldians, offending John in the process. Gabby and Falco excuse themselves from the table and try to talk to a very distraught Niccolo. And Gabby reveals a bit too much information. And Niccolo is able to piece together that she is the one who killed Sasha. He angrily picks up the bottle of wine and tries to smash it over her head. But Falco pushes her out of the way. And he gets struck in the process. As he lays on the ground, the wine trickles into his mouth. Later, Niccolo confirms his suspicions that the wine is laced with Zeke's Spinal fluid. That's why they showed in the beginning. Um. Who? Wow. Okay. Yeah. This is the um. We talked about this a little bit last episode. We were all like, "Oh no, that can't be it." We've all seen that when people take Zeke's spinal fluid and he's going to turn them into the Titan, that they freeze up and have this weird like look on their face. Yep. Apparently, we have been lied to to the point where the show even calls out to buy a Hanji. Wow, this was a really good lie, but dastardly effective. Yeah, we don't know who drank the wine. We know we know that it was all those MPs. Um, and really, it doesn't matter who drank the wine necessarily. I mean, it does for our favorite characters because obviously we'd want them to be alive. But 
at the end of the day, if Zeke screams, you've got how many Titans just Appearing. in paradise at any point? And if the scouts know about this, that means that this is like their fail safe. Yeah. Like if things go wrong and we're we're against the clock and things are ramping down or things are crumbling around us, yell. It's well, we do believe I think that they made a good move by putting Zeke in the forest because he's not really near too many people. We've also seen that wine has been served in the forest, though. I don't know how yeah. intention. I the issue with this, and this is the reason. Like, it's the reason why I hate people that are like, "Oh, the drapes are blue because the author just wanted them to be blue." No, the drapes are blue because it's going to turn into a goddamn titan in two episodes. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's again we've been talking about the Shekhov's gun like they everything that's happened in the show is very intentional and when they showed that close up of the, of people in the forest drinking the wine next to Zeke calmly reading the book that tells me that Zeke has been communicating this plan like before they arrived on paradise and because of the conversation that Levi had in front of him where one of them like whispered in his ear and said wait are you serious that means Zeke knows what's going down in paradise essentially to some extent it's um I mean he had Yelena as his first point of contact when he came over like basically Yelena has been able to act as his mouthpiece the entire time and I'm sure that this is something that the audience is very aware of at this point yeah um but it's it really just comes down to how much foresight did he and Aaron have when it came to this? And how much, like, is this going to be a leverage point for them for negotiating? Or is this going to be their plan Well, to get by, rid of the top brass? By Flock's conversation that happens later on in the episode, which we'll talk about then, there is no negotiating. A at least from the Jaegerists. It doesn't seem like they have all of the cards now. They, because everybody in the military that's top brass has drunk the wine, it seems. Because, you know, as uh, as Nicolo says, they have been like pressured to give this wine to the top brass. Maybe they didn't know about it, but there might be others like Nicolo who don't know the full extent of it and then just might be innocently giving people these this wine. It could, hell, it could even be going to people that aren't even top brass if people don't even know about it. Like there's a possibility that some of our favorite characters could have drunk in this wine I could, and they just didn't know about it because I could easily see Levi and Hanji ending up in that pool. Also, we still have the wild card of Historia and what role she's going to play in all this. Yeah. Um, man. And then we, we didn't even talk about the immediate thing. Falco has drunk the wine. Falco drank the wine. I mean, potentially the only way that he's coming back is if he eats a shifter, which the odds of that happening in the chaos of battle. I mean, it's possible, but I and... actually I have a theory of just how it's going to be written that because he is the person who's supposed to inherit the armor Titan. Oh, if yeah. Uh, and because we already know our uh, our war units already here. I could totally see. Oh, shoot, I'm I, his, Reiner. Reiner, thank you. I could totally see Reiner making the decision if he finds out what happened to him and that he's been shifted. If he that he's going to sacrifice himself. So oh that no! That I could would, totally see it. I could, and that it's, totally makes sense. You just said that, and it makes total sense because he's been wanting to die for so long. And he sees Falco as the proper successor for someone who can carry the armored Titan and can understand the true nature of the conflict and potentially bring some peace. Oh, God, I don't want that. <laughs> well, it can't be no. Gabby. Gabby's maybe just going to be able to pull herself through to some sort of moment. But yeah. currently, it, the way you look at it, she's just too much like Aaron at the moment. Yeah. We all know how dangerous it is for someone like Aaron to be a Titan shifter. She's she's not like Aaron. She is she's not. Is she though? 
I don't know. They're not setting her up the same way that Aaron was. With Aaron, we'll talk. A, with, I with Aaron, I agree with that in some regards. We're gonna. Have yeah, to we'll talk, talk about, about that, that in a little bit. In another point, there's a lot this episode. It's all tangentially fucked up together. Yeah. If if we are talking about Gabby, and this could serve as a segue to the next topic, I've been seeing a lot of people online still trying to find a way to blame Gabby, or not blame Gabby because it is her fault, but to not understand that there is more than just this character killing your favorite character. There's more to the story than just that. And I find it very upsetting that people are still trying to find ways and justify Gabby's punishment and deserved punishment, saying that she should have been the one to get struck by the bottle. Nobody should have been struck by the bottle. Nobody nobody should have been fed Titan juice. Nobody should have, they shouldn't have snuck on board. They shouldn't be warrior candidates. They shouldn't be living in an internment zone. And I'm just, I'm very frustrated by people who can, who just continue to not see the point, which is that the situation itself is bad and people are only doing things. People act by their nature. You put people in certain circumstances, they're going to act a certain way. If you want to make people act not a certain way, change their environment. Change the way that they see the world. We have talked about this a lot on the podcast of what the intention of the author is versus the way that the audience perceives it. Mm -hmm. And the intention of the author, it's... There's a certain level of if you ha are, um, I don't want to say intelligent audience, but a more intelligence audience member that understands storytelling theory yeah. and media theory is going to understand this story very easily. But we've talked about the Fight Club effect before on this podcast. Mm -hmm. And this is, I kind of feel like it might be a good idea to just do a separate video essay just on the fight club effect and this show and how it's manifesting in really poor ways. Yeah. Cause the fandom is getting a little, I'm just, I'm right there with you. I'm upset with how people are interpreting Gabby. Yeah. She is not supposed to be as hated and you guys are not supposed to like Aaron to the point where the author of the manga has said it. So many times you are not supposed to like him. Yeah. You are not well, supposed to like him at this point. You're supposed to be scared of him. Well, we it's I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to still hold out hope because we're obviously not done. There's only three more episodes in this in this part of the se uh, the season and there's going to be a part 2. The more that the episode comes, the more that episodes come, the more that I feel the needle shifting to people liking Gabby. I feel it. And I think a great example of this was Mr. Browse's monologue that happened in the restaurant. Um, so I think after, you know, all of that happened where Niccolo punched Gabby and, you know, smashed the bottle on Falco, Gabby and Falco, they're dragged out by Niccolo and he holds the knife to Falco's throat. He tells everyone in the restaurant that she is responsible for Sasha's death and even gives Mr. Browse the opportunity to kill her himself. He instead takes the knife away from Niccolo and says that the reason Sasha died is because she stayed in the forest too long. In this monologue, he analogizes the forest he's trained Sasha in with the world, describing it as a forest itself. And only by keeping the children from wandering into the forest can they break the cycle of hatred. As he says this, Kaya grabs the knife from the table and tries to stab Gabby in the face, Mikasa, of course, blocking the knife. She cries out, how could you do this, murderer? Gabby is quietly ushered away by Mikasa and Armin as Hanji rinses out Falco's mouth and tries to rinse the wine off of him, all while Kaya screams and cries in the distance. So, best scene in the show. This is phenomenal for two reasons first of all fantastically written monologue and the drama and the ups and downs of this 
chef's kiss not a french kiss i we're not tonguing the show um yeah. <laughs> but the i mean we could it's a really good show chef's kiss it's a chef's, chef's kiss, kiss. Ben. it's a chef's kiss where my well, the point that i was trying to get to is this is the first moment in the season where we have it's not on the nose but it is explicit that this show has a very strong anti-war message it's just a matter of, again, we've been talking about the fandom and the issues with it. Is that going to land? Is the audience yeah. going to see it that way? Or it are they going to see this as idealistic? They've got to follow through. If they make any more mistakes and slip ups on the way to the ending, then this is not going to this is not going to land. If they're able to keep this anti-war message throughout the season continuously starting from this moment on, if they don't ever allude to the fact that war is a good thing and that what the, the characters are doing is good we we have a strong fighting chance but if it gets romanticized specifically with Aaron's actions yeah. then we're going to be in trouble the thing that I'm and to me where this monologue really comes in line is um, we had a little bit of debate about this before the podcast he's talking about the world but the way that I feel like reading this is a little bit more true and what the reason why it has that anti-war message is he's talking about something that both Paradise and Marley have in common, which is the fact that they both use child soldiers. Yeah. This is something that we have seen since the Scouts in season one the scout training required after the uh, Titans broke through Wal Maria. 14 year olds, basically. Yeah. And same thing on the Marleyan side, uh, arguably for more insidious reasons, but it's something it's a cross that they both bear that has manifested in terrible ways for both of them. Sasha, she he may talk about the beginning of this as Sasha being a hunter and her going out into the woods to kill and feed to kill animals and feed her family. But the fact of the matter is that that evolved into her becoming a scout regiment soldier, which then because this conflict turned from human versus Titan to human versus human, she became an actual full blooded soldier. Yeah. And that is the heart of this conflict is you cannot keep putting children into this kind of conflict and then expecting them to make the world better. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I, I mean, I was just tr I was trying to I mean, I didn't necessarily think of it that way. A hundred percent. I just the way that I. The way that I took that was that the world itself was cruel by its nature. Um, and obviously, I think it's because, like you were saying, it is because the world as a whole is fueled by this need to continue violence and to continue hatred. And of course, you know, I think the child soldier thing does play a part in that. And I think now listening to you say that, that could totally be what he meant explicitly. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't really have any other way to put it because I think what you just said there pretty much like sums it up in a whole war is bad. You should not include children in war. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, it, it's really fun when you get to boil down controlling ideas to like just what their one sentence bit <laughs> just on the chart would be war bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, child soldier bad um, I'm, I mean because at the end of the day that's we can talk we can run circles around this point all we want that's what that's what he means like we can't and you're right to say that we can't try to make a better world by forcing our children into these horrible atrocities and then and then turn around and act confused when the world has continued to be a living hellscape I believe there's even a line. I, I believe there is a line in this monologue, or at least at this point, it turns into 
well, it, technically, it's a solilo. It, it, it fucks monologues, and soliloquies are the same thing in TV. Um, but there is technically a point where I believe he turns toward. Um, oh, shoot, I'm 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 losing names right now. I'm losing names. Uh, Nicolo. Nicolo. I, for some reason, I started. I thought it started with an H. I need like a cheat sheet. <laughs> There's a point where he turns. To, there is a point where he actually turns to Nicolo and says, "It is up to us adults to shoulder the sins of the past." Yes, which I think is probably the most on the nose moment of it. Um, but it's very concise in what its messaging is, and a really important thing to note is what this whole thing has actually now done for Gabby's character. Yeah, because she's seen, like, because she has a, she has only been taught that Eldians on the island are devils, and I think a lot of this arc has been her trying to confirm or reaffirm that message, either it be vocally trying to say it, or just trying to like find the proof, and right at the moment where. It was like, done deal. I'm dead. Definitely going to die. Spared life. And I even think the moment with Kaya um, was not a moment. Like, I think that moment actually did impact her more than the show might. I, I mean, obviously, I think the show showed it. Because as she's walking down the hallway and being escorted by Armin and Mikasa, you just hear her screaming. And... She's not, and the way that she looks at Kaya isn't with anger. It's not with disgust. It is, it's shock. It's, and the only way that I could think to interpret that is that I have now caused this harm. And even with the conversation with Armin and Mikasa in the room where she's, you know, saying like, you want to kill me, right? You, you want to do this? She's not she doesn't believe this anymore or at the very least she's on the she's edge. trying to get confirmation she's yeah. trying to be like please tell me that you want to kill me so that i can die with my belief system intact right that everything it's, i that everything i've been raised to believe has been true please tell me that you want to do this i think that's the what she's and what she's trying to say there the reason why I don't think Reiner would want to give her the armor Titan initially is because he's not going to see any of this character growth. Mm -hmm. However, at this point, Gabby now has had something that Aaron has never had, which is compassion that is being shown to her from the other side. Yeah. Aaron... He may have been friends with Reiner, Berthold, and Annie at different points, but all of those friendships were under the pretense of lies. Turned out to be traitors. He he literally called them traitors as he jumped off the wall and turned into a titan to fight them. Gabby, on the other hand, everything's out in the open. She gets nothing but the truth, and she's, she's going to get a whole bunch of truth next episode. She's also been entrenched in enemy territory as opposed to being amongst comrades and finding out that they're not who they seem. Different context. So take that for what you will. Um, I think that she has a strong chance of being what Aaron could have been. Absolutely. Which, Which we is, will have to wait and see. I'm liking the fact that from a writing perspective, they have taken her from the extremist end and are bringing her to a much better spot where Aaron has literally done the opposite. Yeah. Speaking of Aaron, um, you know, as Armin and Mikasa are talking with Gabby and we just said that she's still shaken by the events that just unfolded and she, like we said, questions Armin and Mikasa, you know, do you want to kill me? I know you do. Armin responds that she reminds him of someone else. And literally on cue, Aaron shows up with his hand already cut with just a small wave. As Hanji cleans Falco, Flock and the Jaegerists also bust into the restaurant, and they exclaim that they aren't negotiating with the military, and they will be forcibly taking Hanji to lead them to Zeke. 
Hanji tries to plead with them, saying that Zeke has been poisoning wine and turning the military against itself. But Flock sees this as an opportunity to take out all the MPs. Interestingly, Hanji never mentioned the MPs. And with the smuggest smile and shush, Flocko, Flock, not Flocko, what? (laughs) Yeah, sometimes you can't get the reads right, it's okay. Flock reveals that the scouts already knew about the wine. And we finish the episode with the beginning of the conversation between Aaron, Mikasa, and Armin. And Gabby is there also. Um, we lost. We're done. We effectively, <laughs> we had we had a plan in one episode, and it got completely shafted in the next. It's gone. It's, yeah. Yep. And not just by a little bit hard no, like, like we, there's every the, piece of leverage that the paradisians thought they had against the agorist just completely went out the window yeah and i do i'm sorry did flock dye his hair did i see that right no he's always had like a it was like this weird neon red orange thing yeah he's always had that kind of hair okay. except in in the in season three it was like it's like hat hair it was like it was, a bowl. It was a bowl on, cut. It was like, it was like a, a bowl really on top of his ginger head. beetle. Yeah, but that's crazy that they knew about the wine. I, I mean, mean, it's not crazy it that they. Knew, it's not crazy that they. I mean, yeah, yeah, it is because up until this point, we ha- were under the assumption that Zeke and Zeke has Zeke and the Jaegerists are like kind of of the same mind, but ultimately are seeking the same doing the same things because they have like a they have like the same kind of objective or similar alignments the enemy of my enemy is my friend kind of deal yeah and especially because flock was there when zeke killed all of the scouts i can tell you exactly why i completely disagree with that go for it we have discussed on this podcast before a very neatly hidden line that confirms that while Aaron was off on his own, he had been in plenty of communication with Zeke. And that was the baseball glove that was gifted to him by a family member. You're right. Yeah. They have been in heavy communication the yeah. entire time. There, We should never be surprised that these two factions are completely in lockstep because they had an entire year to come to some sort of agreement plus a plan. This is wild. This is just unbelievably wild. I, yeah. You know what I think is even wilder? I can't believe Flock is actually a main villain and kind of threatening. <laughs> that's, un- that's that's the thing that I actually can't believe. Um, I called him shithead mcgee since episode one of covering this season and i do not regret it he's but like told- i but i love him i love I it hate so him. much no, no I, I hate him too no i hate him but he's i love to villain. hate him he's, he's a, a good w- villain he revels in other people's misery he's borderline sociopathic but he's totally a follower he's like if you cut the head off the beast no, he's yeah. gonna be completely unable to do anything but he's like the uh i the way that i look at him is he's the um uh, this is going to be a uh, another comparison but i believe that there was a character in schindler's list that was entirely too reveling in being a nazi guard um don't Maybe, remember the movie but i get the sentiment that you're talking yeah about. it's it's one of those it's a it's total henchman but entirely too into their job the only difference though is that with flock he has a very he is all about following people who he believes will help him and his people it's very much like his intentions are weirdly good Mm, are they do well, I, I have to bring up Nazi Germany again and how a lot of people thought they were doing the right thing there? We don't even... Well, yeah, obviously. But we don't even know what Aaron's plan is. We don't know what the what the big end game is. I mean, obviously, I, we're kind of suspecting that it's going to be the rumbling. But, I mean, we haven't... 
<laughs> we haven't explicitly been told what the plan is. Oh man. I uh, just God. I hope I hope the plan isn't just, hey, we're gonna destroy the world because everyone sucks. I hope that's not No, it. it's gotta be more com- it, it's gotta be more complicated than that. I'm yeah. I'm hoping that what this turns into is Aaron has some sort of justified plan, but everyone else is piggybacking off of it for their own self-interest. Because yeah. one thing that, when we're talking about Aaron, there is something very important to just note about his demeanor when he says, I wanted to talk to you guys. First of all, he says it in the past tense. Second of all, he's not making eye contact. He's looking down. He and he looks he distraught. Is visibly well, here's the thing. Body language 101. Someone looking down is usually shame. Yeah. He knows that whatever is about to happen is either bad or he knows that he's not going to be able to get his friends back. Okay. This is actually something I wanted to pose to you during because we're we were just talking about what is Aaron going to say during this conversation? Here's what I'm thinking. I think that Aaron is going to say, and this ties into something that you said a few episodes back. I think this is going to be the point where Aaron says to Mikasa and Armin, hey, things are about to go crazy. Like, because like the wine has been poisoned. Uh, Military's taken over. Zeke's probably going to get out soon. Paradise is going to probably attack. And Marley. maybe Zeke... Maybe Zeke even, uh, or sorry, Marleyan is going to attack. And Zeke might have even taken that precaution. Well, like he, he blew off, like he blew off his arms and his legs and it wasn't enough. Was that part of the plan? And so this might be part of Aaron's conversation to Mikasa and Armin saying, hey, join me. I think he wants his friends on his side. I think he's going to want them to be Jaegerist. And there's two reasons for this. First of all, it's his friends. He loves Mikasa. Armin has been his best bud since season one. Yeah. And there's no going back on that. As another note, Armin is the colossal titan. Yeah. You can't A just... very important asset. Yeah, you can't just not... You can't just get rid of that. And I don't think Aaron will try and get him killed at all. But mm-hmm. I think Aaron could be like, if you guys don't join me, I can't promise that they're not going to come after you, Armin. Yeah. Like, it's... I'm sure Zeke has some sort of plans for the Colossal Titan. And these are the moments where we have to remember that even though Zeke and Aaron may be in lockstep, there is some difference in motivation. Yeah. So really it's we're going to have to wait and see exactly what he says, but I completely agree. I think he's going to ask them to either join or at the very least understand the situation that he has become in tune with, whatever that is. Mhm. Cuz again, some character development happened in that one year of that flashback we did not get. The only thing that I think might come as a result of that is I don't know if they'll join. I don't think they will because we've we've sh- we've seen in the past that Armin, of course, has heavy re- reservations about uh about Aaron, especially in the air when Levi when Levi was kicking Aaron on the airship and Armin just let it happen and held back Mikasa and even Mikasa didn't fight back. Mikasa even like having to justify her argument to Connie saying like, of course, Aaron cares about us. He loves us. We're his friends. We can talk to him. I think this is starting to crumble away. And I think because this is the halfway point of the show, I think we're going to see the full on division that Aaron is now going to be the villain for part two. And that As if he wait, he wasn't already the villain. He, I mean, I think that he was, I think he's going to be a villain proper. I think he's going to be doing more villainous things. Right now, he's been mute. He has had very little screen time. We have barely heard any lines from him. Um, Yeah. And most of them, almost the lines that he did have were under false pretenses, like talking with Falco in, in Liberia. 
Like, we don't know anything about Aaron. So I think part two is going to be where we get more information, start to get more reveals. Aaron starts to do more bad things, which pushes the scouts to be like, all right, we got to take you down. I completely agree with that uh with that storyline actually it's uh and it's i we have to remember he forced armin's hand into basically bombing an entire city with his titan form yeah i'm sure we're gonna see some of that emotion from armin in the next episode and whatever mikasa is going to go through because i mikasa's probably the most stuck in between person that we can see as a character right now yeah well let's talk about that because in the preview we do see armin and mikasa and they look shook um aaron still looks dead inside hanji is taken to keith shaddis of all people and levi is falling that's all we see and the episode is titled savagery um we also see that flock is with keith shaddis as well so it seems like Flock is going to be taking on scout recruits, new fresh, fresh meat, basically, and I, trying to enlist them into this new cause. Destabilized country. Yep. Yeah. Um, this is. We we've already talked a lot about this. We're gonna see. Uh, frankly, we have to see. I could see Keith Shaddis being an Aaron sympathizer because of Aaron's mother and his yeah. relationship as a whole. Again, we've already talked plenty about Mikasa and Armin. I think the real big piece is what's going to happen with Zeke and Levi. I mean, they've shown the wine in the forest. We know that they've been drinking wine. I have a theory Go about for the it. Ackermans. We have discussed at length um, how important race is in this show. Mm -hmm. There's only two Ackermans that are named, Mikasa and Levi. Right. Do Ackermans technically count as Eldians as far as their bloodline is concerned? Oh... Oh, so are you saying Levi might be immune to the... He could be immune, and they've already talked about the fact that the, the reason why they did not want to even consider Mikasa for being a Titan inheritor you're, you're right, was they didn't for even that know. exact reason. They have no idea what the Ackermans actually are. That's crazy. Okay. There is a good chance that Levi could potentially make it out of whatever crazy Titan shifting shit's going to happen. Yeah. It's, I, I, I have no, if there's anybody who could survive a full on Titan swarm, it's two people. It's Levi and Mikasa. Those That's are the only it. two. That's it. Okay. I'm feeling a lot better That's now. my theory. And we're going to hold on to that I'm for the feel, rest of the season. That that makes me feel a lot better about that. So thank you. Thank you for that, Ben. Uh, <laughs> I, hope, I hope you listeners at home feel better knowing that Levi might actually live through this. So... You know, thank you guys so much for watching and listening. So be sure to hit like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel because we do, like I said, post videos all the time. Every week, you always have a reason to come back. We're also covering episodes of WandaVision, just wrapped up, and we're going to be covering Attack on Titan. We're going to be covering My Hero Academia, a new show, Invincible, that's coming out on Amazon Prime. A lot of new shows are going to be coming to the channel, so please hit the bell and stay notified for our new videos and uploads. Until then... It's too fast to move it.